back to the Botanis Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And today we are going to help you plan your spring garden and have continuous spring color. Yes, continuous spring color. Because I think uh, often what happens is people get very excited, obviously, about the spring. Who wouldn't, especially in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Saving it's grace, I tell you. Freezing cold. And yes. It's wet and rain and all of that. All of that. So we are so happy when the spring comes. And I think what happens is a lot of times is we'll plant stuff because we want stuff to come up in early spring. And then it's great. And early spring is fabulous and lots of color and blooms and fragrance. And then mid spring comes and it kind of peters off. And by late spring, we don't have much more blooming and we have to wait for the perennials to come up in the summertime. Yeah, exactly. So, but I th uh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, sometimes, especially that time of the year when, uh, mm -hmm. when fall starts, we all, our mind is completely in the fall of cleaning up and mm -hmm. getting everything ready and covering right. it up. And we completely forget spring because yeah. we're just not in that season. Right. Eh? But this Think is a very ahead. important time. Now, this is, this is gardeners, they're always a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the fall, yes, we clean up, we all, but we also have to plan a spring already. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to plan a great spring, then you want to plan for continuous color. And, you know, so often we'll hear, you know, gardeners say, you know, oh, I, I think I'm planting too much in the fall. And then come spring, they think, oh, gosh, I should have planted more. Should have planted more. <laughs> so it's a good idea to just give it a little bit of thought at this time of year, what you want your spring garden to actually look like. And as we said at the beginning, what we're here to do today is to give you a bit of tips on how you can plan for continuous color from early, mid to late. Yeah, and that's kind of the secret letters, mm -hmm. EML, or that's right. early, mid, late. And mm -hmm. we have that in the catalog. Mm -hmm. Every plant is marked early, mid or late. Mm -hmm. And uh, even better on the website, uh, because you can also search for early, mid and late, which exactly. means when you choose, we usually go into a catalog or website and we pick by the picture, by the mm -hmm. flower, we like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I would like to have that in my garden, which is obviously the first uh, thing you do. Mm -hmm. But then also make sure that what you chose is not all blooming at the same time. Right. So stretch, stretch it out, choose a few things that bloom early mm -hmm. and mid and late, and then you really have continuous yeah. color and a nice bit of overlap. So exactly. So you've got that nice and that the spring, depending on where you are in Canada and depending on what Mother Nature decides to do, can be a shorter season or it can be a longer season. Could be a longer season. season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I chose one uh, uh, actually, which is a very early one. Mm -hmm. It's called Pushkinia libanotica. Mm -hmm. And actually, Wendy made me laugh because we were talking about this <laughs> one, and she says it kind of sounds like James Bond's girlfriend, like a <laughs> Russian girlfriend, Pushkinia libanotica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. It, it really does. It totally it, so does. So we had a little chuckle about that. But I. Uh, I saw that uh, Pushkinia. We had it once mm -hmm. in a in a mixture. It was an early mixture with muscari in there mm -hmm. uh, and a libanotica, uh, which is uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous little plant. It's bright white mm -hmm. and has a blue stripe going through mm -hmm. the middle. And very often plants have very, very small and very thin lines and you yeah. barely see them yeah. but that blue line is yeah. a blue line and you see it and you actually mm -hmm. see it in the grouping it's it's it looks almost striped but mm -hmm. it's so cute mm -hmm. it's, ju it's just and that's an unusual that. color too as we know as gardeners blue, blue is hard to find now it's not that it's all blue but it definitely as you said stands out mm -hmm. and it's a it's a great naturalizer naturalizer too. it's short and uh, i usually take the whole bundle mm -hmm. or the whole bag like if they come in tens or twenties mm -hmm. i put them all in the, in one grouping yeah. uh, uh, because they make a nice little cover, a little cushion, a pillow, yeah. pillow of uh, flowers, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they spread nicely. They they come year after year, mm -hmm. and it's just a nice combo plant with mm -hmm. with uh, some early tulips or other yeah. early plants. Mm -hmm. That uh, this is a low plant. You can put it in mm -hmm. the front, and it's just. It, you literally just make an area and you throw all the bulbs and you don't yeah. you don't have to care about up and down and that's anything. right you just you just kind of drop them and mm -hmm. wherever they fall that's where they come up and what a great flower to have in the spring mm -hmm. first one of the first I ones totally in the love it now if you're looking for perhaps an early tulip one of the really pretty ones is a fosteriana type of tulip and all fosterianas are considered early bloomers and this one is called flaming parisima such a lovely name. <laughs> it, it basically is a, warm. <laughs> yes, it's lovely white petals, but they've got this absolutely gorgeous sort of pink blush on them. And inside, it's a, sort of a bright yellow color. So a bit of a tri-color uh, tulip going on, but it's a lovely one. It grows to, you know, 
they're usually about 16 inches, mm -hmm. but it's a nice early tulip. And as I said, the color on it is just such, um, yeah, it reminds me of spring. It's white, it's like, oh, let's forget about the snow. Now we've got some nice pink coming through, nice warmer color. It's a great one to even, you know, plant with your Pushkinia oh, yeah, yeah, this together yeah. because the Pushkinia don't grow as tall. And then you've got those lovely tulips coming up above it. And, you know, we have so many choices. We literally are only just, you know, it's a drop in the dipping, bucket. Dipping we're, in it. we're dipping yeah. into the varieties, but these are ones we just want Want to kind of point out to you maybe ones that you haven't tried before that you might want to experiment with now yeah and we we choose sometimes we just one uh, stumble upon things mm -hmm. like the um, the uh, purissima we mm -hmm. actually the first time we saw it was as a cut flower we had them in and we thought oh my gosh this is such a, mm -hmm. a gorgeous flower uh, and it, it gives you like a feel of of almost like a bouquet because yeah. it is multicolored mm -hmm. and, and uh, so after we had it saw how beautiful it grows in mm -hmm. a or is as a cut flower mm -hmm. we looked for the bulb and right. there it is exactly. there it is <laughs> so we've got our early spring we're all very excited thank goodness things are coming up in the garden winter is on its way out the door and <laughs> bye now bye-bye <laughs> <bye. laughs> see, <ya. laughs> see you later <laughs> uh, and now we're kind of moving into mid-spring and mid-spring is the time of year when you might actually be spending a little bit more time out mm, in the garden, yes, yeah. the weather is starting to warm up. You're, you know, you're actually going out into the garden. So we thought we might suggest a few varieties that might pull your interest a little bit. And one that I picked out that I just think is absolutely charming is the Narcissus called Whistly. Now it is a rock garden Narcissi, which means that it doesn't grow as tall. Um, of course, you can plant it in a rock garden as suggested, or you can grow it in a container. But what I love about this one is just the look of it. Uh, it's got those beautiful white petals and that, that yellow cup and it just it seems to elongate and it's very ruffled on the end. Mm -hmm. It's so so pretty and it was named after actually one of the, the famous gardens in, in England called Whistley interestingly the enough, garden. Uh, the Whistley Garden, <laughs> and I just think it's a lovely little daffodil narcissi to bring in the mid-spring season and enjoy. You can, as I said, plant it in a container, uh, you can plant it along rockways or pathways. It's not a super tall growing one, so you want to make sure that you do place it correctly so you can enjoy it uh, mid-spring. But it's a real beauty and very, very charming. Mm -hmm, totally. So I moved on with a, another choice, also in the mid-section or mm -hmm. mid-blooming uh, period, which is a triumph tulip called Sorel. Mm -hmm. And Sorel is is another one of those tulips that give you the feel of a bouquet because it's multicolored. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a bright white Yes, very bright based. white. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and has flames on the outside in a blackberry kind of a yeah. purpley purple. dark. Yeah, it's just, so it's just awesome. gorgeous. And the contrast is so great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love darker colors, but you may have to make sure with any dark color, if it's especially when it's a it's a solid black tulip or something, you have to combine them with something that's bright or something mm -hmm. orange, something white to set them off because dark colors often get lost by the dark soil that mm -hmm. is behind it. So Sorel gives you the whole deal already yeah. because you have both uh, <laughs> together and it's it's a good height. It's about mm -hmm. 22 inches mm -hmm. uh, tall, which uh, which is a nice, uh, nice standard height for a tulip. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could also combine it with uh, with uh, Wisley. Exactly. Wisley. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So now we're moving into late spring. And often when we think of late spring blooming flowers, we'll, we'll think of alliums mm -hmm. because they're actually more almost like an early summer blooming variety. And there's lots of alliums to choose from. But one that I particularly like is one that's a little different looking. It's a low growing allium. It's called Allium Neapolitanum. It's white with the very finest tiny veins of pink. Mm -hmm. And it again, it doesn't grow very tall. It's more like almost like a ground yes, cover. Yes, it is. Yeah. A lovely thing to finish up your baskets with, uh, your containers. It'll be coming up in the late spring, quasi early summer. Um, such a pretty bloom and not what you would normally think of as an allium. We often think of those beautiful purple balls uh, of alliums or white balls of alliums. These are more, um, Hey, they're, they're just different. The flowers are not large. They're more like a very tiny crocus, mm -hmm. but you're just covered like almost like a little mat of, exactly. of color. Yeah, yeah. And I just think they're very, very pretty, especially if you get up nice and close and you see that little pink vein. Very, very uh, nice to have to 
end your spring season with. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. always Adams is a very good uh, way of getting into the next season yes, because they your, are so late. Yeah, yeah into and, your perennial and, summer and season. And like you said, a lot of people really just know the purple balls when they mm -hmm. hear alliums, but there's a whole bunch of different kinds, mm -hmm. really funny looking ones, like mm -hmm. crazy ones. We even have a whole allium collection if yeah. you're interested in that. They, are, they really take your spring season really they stretch mm -hmm. it out because they bloom so late so yes. I, I totally love albums yeah, in them for sure mm -hmm. so uh, yeah and then I thought we need another tulip that blooms very late mm -hmm. and the, the one I chose was the double late tulip blue wow and mm -hmm. it, it is really a wow because <laughs> this thing opens up and it's like you think it's like a peony mm -hmm. I mean if you take a close-up of that tulip you think is that a tulip because it's so full and it's a really a wow mm -hmm. uh, a wow flower it's yeah. big um, I love it because you don't need a lot of them mm -hmm. because of the size of the flower and because they give you a real big show mm -hmm. so you don't need like five in a in a little container mm -hmm. five in a grouping is already nice they need a little bit protection in uh, in the sense of when when it's raining yes and they fill up they often you know they, they mm -hmm. tend to they soak up all they, that yeah rain. they, they mm -hmm. get heavy they get top heavy mm -hmm. but uh, I know that uh, before and then I just choose a Plant spot where they just a little bit protected. Mm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's all about the planning. <laughs> a little bit of planning in the fall goes a heck of a long way in the springtime. <laughs> oh, and yes. remember what we said earlier, when you think you're planting too many bulbs in the fall, nah. trust us, you not need happening. more. Yeah. And it's not just because we're plant pushers. We just know, fill in more. You will not be disappointed in the spring yeah, then yeah. when all those beautiful blooms come up. I think it's uh, it's interesting. Sometimes people mm -hmm. say to us, you know, wh why don't you just tell me when this flower is blooming? Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say, oh, this is, uh, they bloom in February, they bloom mm -hmm. in March, because we have to name it early, mid, late, which means early spring, mid spring, late uh, spring, because the spring is different in every part of Canada. Yes, I mean, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. It's, it's just so, you know your spring better, but you can say, well, our mm -hmm. spring is from whatever, March to May, yeah. whatever, yeah, or in, in some other parts in, in March right, and May, there's still the snow, so they are, there's this way later, but mm -hmm. it means the season, right. early, mid and late. And Mother Nature always has the last say. She <laughs> yes, is she the does. queen of the world. And if she decides that spring is going to come a little bit early next year, well, there's no stopping her <laughs> or a little bit late. It's all up to her. But keep in mind, as long as you plant varieties that are you know, rated well, for seasons. blooming at different times, then it doesn't matter what Mother Nature decides, you're still going to have that continuous bloom of color. And that's the most fun. I think that's of an awesome spring. tip. Yes. I think we're great. Yeah, we are. I mean, seriously, <laughs> we give such great tips. Really, we do. <laughs> so we hope you do a little bit of planning this fall and think about that spring. We know it's months away, but you'll be glad that you did. And uh, if you are a regular Botanus Garden Club um, viewer, then you know what's coming up. And if you're a new viewer, well, we've got a nice little surprise for you because you could actually win something. What we do is we ask a question and then we ask you to send in the answer. And then we do a draw tomorrow. And so today's question is, which flower did we mention today that is named after a garden in England? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you listened, yeah, you'll it's know. right there. Now tomorrow we are going to uh, take all the entries and people need to send their answer to garden club at botanist.com mm -hmm. and we're going to draw three names and three those names. winners are going to get what? Each yeah. one gets a three dollar, uh, three dollar, mm -mm. three people get a ten dollar botanist gift card. Awesome. That's great. Spending with yeah. whatever you want, yeah, whenever you, can, you want. Exactly. You can spend it, you know, tomorrow <laughs> and uh, order some spring bulbs or you can save it for next season or for whenever. But it's a great little gift to you and we hope that you enter that contest. Send your answers in because we will do that draw tomorrow. Until then, we hope you are enjoying your autumn season here in Canada and we look forward to seeing you next week again in the Botanist Garden Club. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.